Hey guys, it's Alex. I'm coming to you from Thorson's headquarters in Sweden and today we're going to build a water cooling system in Mjölnir. If you're new here and you don't know what Mjölnir is, basically it's a very compact high-end mini ITX case that lets you use full-size PC hardware. As a matter of fact, it's still not out yet. We're launching it on Kickstarter on November 26, 4 p.m. Central European time. And if you back us in the first hour, you'll actually have a chance to win Mjolnir R, that is RGB, with both panel sets. So performance panel sets and tempered glass panel sets. All right, let's start. First, here are a couple of things you'll need. An anti-static bracelet connected to a grounded source, a couple of pliers, Phillips screwdriver, a small plastic cup to keep all the screws, a plastic card, I use my gym card but I never actually go to the gym, some thermal paste, we use Noctua's NTH1, great stuff, I pretty much use it for all my builds, and the included hex keys. So now let's go over the hardware. For our GPU we've got RTX 2070 Turbo from Asus, for our CPU cooler we're going to use a 120mm AIO from Corsair, the H55. For our power supply, we're going to use SF600 from Corsair. It's a great little SFX power supply. Our motherboard is Z370N Wi-Fi from Gigabyte. For our case fans, we got two 120mm fans, both from Noctua. First one is their amazing NFA1225 mm fan, and the second one is the 15mm version. For our RAM, we've got 16 gigs of Corsair Vengeance RGB Pro. Some awesome lightning effects on those. And last, for storage, we'll use Samsung's Evo 860 2.5 inch SSD, as well as their Evo 970 M.2 SSD. And finally, it's time to grab your Mjolnir. By the way, a quick disclaimer, this case is still a prototype. There are a couple of small things that will improve for the production models. First, there will be no strange color discolorations between the different parts. Second, there will be no screw holes on the outside. We'll also improve the overall tolerances. And last, the GPU bracket, so it's a bit easier to work with. Cool, so let's go! First, unlock Mjolnir by turning the lock knob 90 degrees counterclockwise. You'll find it on the back of the case. And yes, Mjolnir does have a power button. Believe it or not, it's on the back. All right, now place the case vertically and carefully remove the enclosure. So now you've extracted the core. This is basically where you mount all the hardware. This is the CPU side and this is the GPU side. Now grab your pliers and carefully cut the cable ties on top of the core. This will free up the cables for the power supply and the power button. All right, now it's time to install the GPU. First, you need to unlock the racer cable. Then we carefully insert the GPU and lock the racer cable again. Last, insert the GPU bracket through the back panel and secure it with an M3 countersunk screw. Use the Included hex keys. Okay, now it's finally time to install the motherboard. The first thing we need to do is install the I.O. shield. And be really careful because they are very easy to bend. Now align your motherboard with the I.O. shield and let it rest on top of the standoffs. Secure it by screwing it down, down with the four included 632 screws. Last, insert the razor cable into the GPU socket. I know this feels a bit early but it's a really good time to install a 24 pin motherboard cable. Try to pre-bend it like we did as well. Now it's a good time to put on the thermal paste. I usually just put on a small drop. You really don't need too much. Now add the AIO block and secure it to the motherboard. When it comes to a radiator fan, I suggest putting it in pull or intake. This has yielded significantly better results compared to the push or exhaust. Now secure the radiator to the bottom rails with the four included 632 screws. Take the 24 pin motherboard cable and drag it underneath the innermost AIO tube. This is a good time to install the second case fan, the one that goes underneath your motherboard. I suggest configuring this one in pull as well or intake. All right, now let's start cable management. I recommend that you try pre-bending the cables the same way we did. It's really going to help with installing the rest of the hardware. Here are the pre-bent GPU cables. The CPU power cable. The SSD data cable. The SSD power cable. First plug in both GPU cables and try to channel them like we do here. Now plug in the AIO fan to the motherboard, then the case fan underneath the motherboard. Last but not least, the AIO pump. Plug in your CPU power cable and try to channel it like this. Place it between both AIO tubes. It will really help with installing the power supply later. Now squeeze in the SSD power cable and the Molex cable for the RGB controller. 
I know it looks like a mess right now, but trust me, it will really help you to install the power supply. Okay, cool. Now it's time to install the power supply. This is by far the hardest part of this build. Everything from here on will be a breeze. Secure the power supply with the six included 632 screws. Try to channel the outermost AIO tube like this. Place your pre-bent SSD data cable like this and plug it into the motherboard. Now add your 2.5 inch drive and secure it with the four included M3 screws and plug in both the SSD data cable and the power cable. Now it's time to plug in the power cable into the power supply. And don't forget to turn on the power supply so you don't have to open the case later. We're almost done guys. It's time to install the well-hidden power button. Connect it to the front panel IO connectors, but be really careful. If you break one of the pins, you pretty much have to get a new motherboard. So if you've got Mjolnir R, it's time to install the RGB setup. First, plug in the Molex cable from the power supply to the Molex to 5V adapter. Plug in one of the RGB light strips to the RGB controller. Connect the RGB controller to the 5V connector. I usually hide the RGB controller behind the GPU cables. Now connect both LED strips to each other. And that's it, if you do some gaming in the dark, your rig will look glorious. Now we're going to install the RAM sticks. Be sure to align them correctly. Push down until you hear a click. That's how you know they are secured. Carefully push both AIO tubes underneath the RAM sticks. Ain't that a beauty? Now the core is fully equipped and you've got yourself a pretty dang powerful rig. To complete your build, simply reinsert the core back into the enclosure and turn the lock knob 90 degrees clockwise. And we're finally done. I hope this helps you once you start your build. And if you want to see more, check out Denise's air cooling build on my walkthrough of different case configurations. Anyhow, please like, share and subscribe. And don't forget about the launch on November 26th at 4pm Central European time. See you there. Thank you.